Hello, everyone. How are you doing? Welcome to another weekly episode where we look at some book covers and talk about why they stand out and maybe offer a few ideas on how we can make them better. Then we get to the fun part where we let you vote for your favorite in the description down below. Speaking of down below, there are several things on there I would really appreciate if you would take the time to click. The first will be the like and subscribe button. And also, I'm your humble host, MLS Weech, and I would be greatly appreciative if you would click on my author link that will take you to my Amazon page. Take a look at some of my work and see if it would interest you. That would be wonderful. We're still doing the best out of the four covers from the month of September. You can vote on your favorite for the overall 2021 September Book of the Month contest. And we are just wrapping up the contest for the first week in October. So there are going to be two things for you to click on down there in terms of voting for the covers. One that will pick the best cover out of the whole month of September, and one that'll let you vote on your favorite that we will talk about today. But first, let's talk about the winner from last week. The winner from last week is You Give Magic a Bad Name by Ty Verson. This cover was unique because it had a light source that went around the subject that allowed for backlight and for fill light. And I thought that was very, very clever. I think the title text and arrangement was clever. I think that the figure, this, this uh, woman was rendered very well. So this cover did a whole lot of good things. Congratulations to Ty Burson and best of luck in the October book cover of the month contest that will start when we finish talking about these seven book covers and the other weeks in October. The first book cover we're going to talk about for this week is Victory from Ashes, and that is a book by Sam Shale. Uh, so I liked the classic feel of this. Um, when you look at old sci-fi books, um, the covers have this interesting tonality. I don't know if it was done intentionally or not, um, but because it reminds me of those, those older uh, science fiction novels, it just hits the right chords with me. The ships are well rendered. They look cool. The cityscape looks nice. Uh, now, the, the knock on this book cover is the choice in title text. Um, one, it's so different from the author text, and it's um, its style is so large and so bold and color is so bright. Sure, it's legible, and that's the requirement. Legibility is everything. So it's not a failure because I can read it, but it's just not a text that I find one matches with the other styles that I see on this cover. And two, it's just not that pleasing to look at. Um, so, you know, big ups on the cityscape and the craft and the feel that this book creates. And that's why I thought it was worthy. And then the title text is the area where I feel uh, it, it might need a little love. The next image is Gutter Mage by J.S. Kelly. Uh, and uh, maybe the theme for this week, I don't ever purposefully pick themes, but inevitably I find one, uh, is a classic style, classic feel. Um, this has a very 60s feel to it. Um, I, I love the use of color and I love the unique style. Yet again, the, the text is, uh, it leaves a little bit to be desired. I don't hate the font as much as I hate the size and the variation. I don't mind, you know, trying to make each word equally large. That's a very common technique, but that's not what they did. Gutter is still much smaller than mage, but it's it's it looks like they were trying to have the G and the R align with the M and the E, but they don't. And so when it when it's close enough and it looks like that's what they were going for, but it doesn't. It, 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 it really, uh, uh, it, it's, if you're someone who uh, uh, is, is, you know, you're a completionist, uh, uh, you, you might have some, some particular tendencies, it's like seeing uh, a, a basketball teeter on the rim of a hoop, 
uh, but not in a good way. It's 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 really kind of grating. Um, but none of that takes away from this beautiful art style, the way this color surrounds from the way it goes from one hand to the other hand. All of those aspects really, really make me like this cover. Uh, and so it really helped me ignore the title text, but you don't really want a, a book cover where uh, the viewer doesn't want to look at your title text. The next cover we're going to look at is Stolen Earth by J.T. Nichols. And this is a fairly standard science fiction spacecraft kind of uh, uh, cover. Now, it's not dynamic action the way a lot of those are. Um, it does this weird magnifying glass kind of zoom in thing, which I don't mind. I think it's kind of clever. Uh, I, I, I kind of liked it. Um, I like that it is simplistic in its nature. I like the color of it. Uh, the ship isn't as awesome as some other ships that I've seen. It looks, uh, uh, it's kind of bulky and humble, but if that's kind of a characteristic in the book, you can't really knock it. Um, if you say the ship looks awesome or the ship looks intimidating or the ship looks threatening, or in this case, the ship looks humbling. Now, if this ship is supposed to be awesome and sleek and, you know, the most dastardly ship out in the, in the, uh, in the universe, uh, then, then I think it needs a little help. But it's supposed to be this, you know, a little humble uh, spacecraft or, you know, a journeyman space, you know, spacefarer saga, uh, then this rendering actually works very well. It all depends on how a person would uh, interpret the actual contents of the book. Um, but I like how everything is arranged. Simple book covers make composition easy, and that's actually a good thing. Simplicity is never something to avoid. What you lose is dynamic visual interest. And what happens sometimes is people go for that and then it just wrecks their whole cover. When you know what, give me a spacecraft, give me the title text, give me, uh, you know, if you want to add a little degree of interest, give me this, this zoom in circle, which creates a framing element that's interesting compositionally. And you know what, I have something I can work with. Uh, so it's not stellar in its, uh, appearance, but it's effective in its use. The next cover we're going to talk about is The Body Scout by Lincoln, uh, Lincoln Michelle. I believe it's Lincoln Michelle. And The Body Scout, I really thought this was kind of just interesting and unique in a design perspective. It kind of looks more like an infographic than a poster. Uh, and that's that's unique in and of itself. I love the arrangement and I like how the lines lead you from one aspect to the next. I don't necessarily understand. Uh, now, I, I do struggle with color. I am red, green, colorblind. So every now and again, hues lie to me. This looks pink to me. I don't think pink is like the worst color in the world. It's not my favorite, but I don't automatically hate pink, but pink with yellow seems a very interesting color combination and that doesn't really work for me so much uh i would have stuck with white uh maybe they were going for a splash of color but i don't know that pink would have been the right call the really awesome thing is you have all of these dynamic um these dynamic um anatomy uh symbols and all of these clever lines and linking systems that allow the eye to just kind of happily wander through as if they're trying to do a maze or happily wander through as they're trying to look at each element. And anything that encourages someone to keep looking and, 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 and seeing it, um, the more you can get someone to dwell on your cover, the more likely they are to buy your book. And this cover definitely does that. It's probably the most clever of the covers uh, we're looking at this week. I don't know about best, that's your decision. You vote on that in the link down below, but I do think it's the most clever. The next is another, um, another simplistic design. It's uh, Warlord Arcanist by uh, Shemai Stovall. I believe it's the proper pronunciation of that name. Uh, this cover has an interesting light, uh, light-based, uh, line art. Um, you know, it's, it's uh, uh, might be a creature. I don't think so. 
I think it's just a unique symbol based on a creature, maybe. Uh, I think that is interesting. I think the sword looks cool. It's just basic design with uh, some title text, uh, but it works. Uh, I actually do like the title text in this regard. Um, so there's this fine line that people create between unique uh, without looking silly or overdone or just not matching with the rest of the text. Um, if you cannot be, if you're going to be distracting, don't be unique. You want to be unique because you're adding to the whole, at least in design. I mean, as a person, I guess, if, if you're one who wishes to stand out, then you want to be unique. Um, but uh, in artistic design, you don't want one element to stand out in a way that interrupts the whole. Everything got to come together. It's a principle we call unity. Sometimes when we teach, uh, uh, where I teach, um, here it adds to unity because it helps with the flow of the book cover. And that is something worthy of credit. Two more book covers to look at. The first one is going to be Winter Light by Kristen Britton. Uh, this cover is still simplistic in its design, but it's a much more dynamic cover. Uh, this cover, I am under the assumption, represents a scene from the book. I absolutely love how all of the elements lead you back toward the main element. This is fantastic unity. Um, the, the text stretches down toward the light on the figure. The light is bright, drawing you toward the figure. The tendrils of mist or power lead you back toward mid or middle with the figure. The people seem to be surrounding the middle where the figure is. Everything's leading you to this main compositional element, and that is great design. The figure's well rendered. That horse looks a little odd. Maybe, the, maybe they're attacking and the horse is like backing up. Um, uh, but while it looks weird, it doesn't, it doesn't look unnaturally weird. It just looks unusually weird. Like that horse is not comfortable right now. Uh, yellow for the title text, uh, author text, not quite sure what you're doing, but what other color are you going to use? So whereas it's, it's not like, uh, uh the cover earlier, uh, with, uh, the body parts, uh, where that paint just really yanked the eye away from the rest of the design. Uh, but it does stand out a little bit. However, what the designer did or the author did or whoever put that text on there, they knew that making it yellow, making it large was going to draw the eye and they put it real close to that white figure so that the connection would follow. And that is clever. So um, even though it's not super dynamic, it is actually super well-designed because it makes the viewer keep looking at that cover and keep looking at that most important element of that cover. And the last cover we're gonna look at today is uh, the, wisdom, uh, the Wisdom of Crowds by Joe Amber, uh, Abercrombie. I have trouble pronouncing his name. It's a very famous author. So um, I'll note, I'm always stuck with the cover that's available on Amazon. <laughs> I'm trying not to get uh, yelled at or sued or whatnot. I'm, I'm definitely not trying to uh, take anyone copy uh, copyright. In fact, I'm trying to get more people to buy these books. So the, uh, uh, but when I'm doing this, I get stuck with whatever resolution and size they give me in Amazon. So this image is real small. And for that, I kind of apologize uh, before I bring it up. Here it is. Um, so really it's just like a wicked ax. It looks like it's breaking through some chains or, or, or doing some damage of some kind. Uh, all of these designs were simplistic in nature with a central visual element that, um, then has the text placed around it in, uh, at the very least, uh, an effective way, if not an interesting way. So, um, one thing I will note is this little detail. Uh, I love how the author text and the title text matches the width of the X. So everything leans down and so just like the X goes from that wicked awesome blade down to that long handle. So also does the title text begin with uh, Joe Abercrombie's name and, and, and 
you put his name on a book alone and someone can buy it because he's it's just a, a very uh, popular figure in the genre. Uh, and then it tapers down to the title text, leads you right to the acts, leads you all the way down. Uh, now, the directional lines of force is a, is a, a term we teach. Um, it's how the eye is directed through a product. It's kind of what that lines do. And what happens is, in this case, you look at the author title, you look at the title text, you look at the action, your eye goes straight on down. I will say the designer probably tried to bring your eye back up with the, 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 the rising chains and metal debris that kind of bring you back up. I just don't think it does that very much. Does that mean it's bad cover? No, not by any stretch of the imagination, especially because you see everything you need to see before your eye is let off the page. And that's uh, 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 that in and of itself is still effective use of directional lines of force, if not the best use. Um, still, you know, you give me, give me, give me that author's name on a book cover with a wicked looking axe, and I'm probably gonna probably gonna purchase this if I'm a person who can read as often as uh, I wish uh, I could read. Uh, that's not like a lament on things. Uh, I, uh, if if I could be reading in the middle of this video, I would do that. Uh, it's just something I enjoy, and I, I I never really feel like I get enough of. Uh, same time, like I never get enough time with my wife or my kids. Uh, I never have enough time to study my Bible. So uh, uh, while I do get to read a few pages here or there a day, uh, I don't have as much time as I want. Uh, and I want, uh, I imagine most readers are like that. So whether you're reading two to three books a week, or you're reading, you know, one or two books a month, or you're reading one every two months, if you love reading, it's kind of hard to get enough time. Uh, so those are the seven covers. And now it's your turn. I need you to go down to the link that is in the description below and vote for your favorite so that we can pick a winner and start uh, uh, qualifying people for the October Book of the Month contest, which we will do uh, after this one and two more weeks. So I hope you've enjoyed it. Please remember to click like and subscribe. And as always, God be with you. Have a great, great week.